Hi guys, Johnny here from the PE Tutor. I thought I'd jump on really quickly uh, just in the midst of all of the things which are going down in education at the moment really. Um, and I thought I'd sort of get out there sort of the four key things which uh, both I'm using um, through the PE Tutor company, uh, but I'm also using with my department in the school that I teach in because I, I teach, I teach full time. Uh, and then obviously the PE Tutor is something that I run uh, sort of in, in not spare time, but in evenings, in, we, uh, in the weekends, and you know, around, around a full-time career in education. So I thought I'd quickly jump on and share the, the four things which I'm currently using, the four tools really of the piece of the software, which has enabled uh, me, my team, to actually move education completely online from home, from you know, our, own, our own place. You know, I'm, I'm out here in, in Dubai, I work, I work out in Dubai, and at the moment we're on, I think, two days away perhaps from going into complete lockdown. So it's been so, so important for, for us as, as, a, as a department in school and for, uh, for me and, and my own team with the PE Tutor. It's been so important to be able to pivot really quickly and put things in place which allow us to deliver the same, the same level of quality lessons for, for the people that we teach um, for the for the staff that we work with and for well, for, for in, in some cases uh, almost more importantly but to give the the parents the uh, the not satisfaction um, but the, the knowledge that they know that their child's education isn't being you know let slip um, so it's so important to actually put things in place to put the structure in place to make sure that quality doesn't drop uh, and that you can continue to deliver um, you know, very, very good, a very good level of education for, for the people that you, that you teach. And you can see behind me, I've put the four, four different pieces of software that, that we're currently using uh, to make sure that things are running as smoothly as possible. And the first one there is, is Teams. Now Teams has sort of, sort of come onto the scene fairly rapidly. I think I was looking at the, the popularity of, of Microsoft Teams in the last couple of months, and it's absolutely skyrocketed. It's essentially WhatsApp, Google Docs, Slack, um, Facebook group, video calling. It's all of that rolled into one. And what we're finding is it's so good for editing software there and then. So you can. So we're in a team of five at the moment uh, with my with my department. And what we're able to do is one person's able to start the ball rolling. So you know, put the the lesson structure or the PowerPoint up. So then it, we almost hand the baton over almost. You say, right, I've done my bit. Uh, next person with the expertise in you know, cahoots or quizzes or worksheets, they can then take the reins up and then carry on editing that document live in front of everyone else. You don't have to be sat there and watching all of these edits, but it does mean that we've just got this one working document. So that saves us so much time. If we're putting together five or six or seven lessons in a day for, you know, primary school, secondary school, you know, I teach um, in sort of middle, middle to upper school. Uh, it's so important that we've actually got continuity almost, you know, that we're not messing around with different numbers of drafts or uh, do I have to download it again and then edit it and then re-upload it again. It just, Teams are brilliant at streamlining that process. Uh, so that's the, that's the first thing that, that we're all using. It's got that, that chat box, that ongoing chat where you can communicate live with everyone next to the document that you're currently editing. So it's as if you're all sitting around on a table in a meeting room with one laptop open, editing it there and then. So that's been really important um, to get us off the ground at least. Uh, second one up there is, is Seesaw. Best way to describe Seesaw is social media for school, where children and parents and teachers have all got access to their classroom journal, it's called. Think of it like the news feed on Facebook, but you can toggle the permissions so that a child and parent can only see the interactions with their child and the teacher. As a teacher, you can see all of your class's response. So, for example, if I've got three classes in year seven, then I can upload the, the lesson and the activities and the videos, which I'll get to in a moment, and I can share all of those with each of the Year 7 classes. Now, from the, from the student's perspective, they just see a post from Mr Benson gets put into the group. They can watch it. They then upload their response. 
Now that's the only interaction they can see, so they don't they don't get confused with all the all the other responses coming in from you know their classmates. They just see the the task, the lesson task, uh, the response box, and then they they respond to the activity. You know they do the lesson. Uh, so it could be you know we were just finishing off one there today uh, to do with throwing technique. So how to you know, bowl underarm in in rounders in baseball or whatever it might be. So an underarm bowl technique video demonstration from us. We post it onto Seesaw for the child to watch. They look at what they have to do. They look at the analysis task of, you know, redo this task, you do it yourself, film 10 attempts, analyze it, here's your analysis tool. Um, and they, and they, they, they operate that way. What it allows us to do as the teaching side is to then collate all of these student responses and go through and give individualized feedback. So it's Again, it's this idea of this working document. It's, it's live, it's always being updated, and it's, it's, it's open. So teachers can access it, the parents can access it, the students can access it. So there's never this delay in send an email, wait, and then you're not sure if, if anyone's picked it up. It's always live, it's always in front of you, but the permissions allow it to be you know, private for, for the students. So definitely recommend getting onto Seesaw or, or at least looking into it. Um, that's been where we're posting our lessons for everyone to find and then receiving the student responses back. Teams is more the back office side, so that's where the department work gets done. Seesaw is then when we're interacting with, uh, with our students. Third up there is, is YouTube. You know, I do quite a bit of YouTube stuff anyway. Um, but what we found is we needed a video library of all of our own video demonstrations because the way that we've decided to approach this is well, we wouldn't, in normal lesson, just get a bog standard YouTube video up from anywhere else and show that to our students. It's not very personalised. So we made it sort of a rule for us, really, that if we're going to be using a demonstration, it needs to be one of us. You know, the students are there at home. They want some familiarity. They want to be able to see their teacher, you know, performing almost. So we've set up the YouTube account for our for our school department, and we've made that private in the sense that only people with the links can click and then find the video. So only our, only our students, only our school, it keeps it very internal, very private and secure for the kids. But it just allows us as a department to upload videos as and when we need to, to this one, it's almost like the cloud almost, but you can upload it there so then we can sort through all of our videos and then just drag and drop the URL, link, URL, URL links when we need to but it also means that the kids and parents can access it as well. So it's this open library, this open storage that we're using for video demonstrations. So the way that we set up lessons is we basically come up with you know, the four or five different episodes that you would normally do in a lesson. And you know, this would work for maths, English, science, physics, chemistry, whatever you're doing. Think about the times that you would actually call a class in and talk to them about something or the next thing or the next development. That's what we're filming. So as long as you can, you provide them the worksheet or the activity and you provide them the video of you talking through that activity and what they need to do, then we've just filmed and uploaded those in the, in the sequence of five and say, here's the first video, watch it, respond to it. Here's the second video, watch it, respond to it. Third, fourth, fifth. So in essence, they're still doing like an hour, an hour lesson, but... They don't, they, they don't have us with them all the time, but just for the times where we would normally have that contact time with them in class. Seesaw is then where we give them personalised feedback. So if they do take the activity that we give them and they listen and watch the instructions that we posted on YouTube, they go away and produce their work or their performance or their film if it's, if it's PE and practical. They then upload it to Seesaw where we can watch it all day. It just literally updates as soon as they upload it. We give some audio feedback or visual feedback if we want to film and upload it again. Or we just comment on what they posted. And we've got that dialogue. So really the only thing that's missing is in-person contact. We're doing everything else that a student would normally get. But we're just doing it digitally. The last one there is Zoom. Now Zoom is sort of a larger scale but less detailed version of Teams, I guess you would say. It's more conferencing. So that's where um, we've been, well, that's where I've been using that more so with the P2 side of thing. 
uh, or sorry, the PhD to side of things rather than sort of the school department. But this is where you know we can host the 10, 15, 20, 25 students that we do have, where you know it, it doesn't. Well, we work all over the world. So Zoom, as long as there's an internet connection, we can all come together uh, and we can all carry on in the exact same way that we have been for you know the last weeks and months and years uh, in this in the PE tuition side of things. Taking that into the school setting and how we've used that to respond with the theoretical content, so year 10, year 11, less so year 11 because um, grade, not grades, exams are being postponed, but the older students who are normally in a classroom, Zoom is great for getting everyone in and it's as if you've got the class in front of you. You can screen share, which is when you would normally be doing a whiteboard demonstration, and you can upload activities, talk things through, you can write on them, highlight them, just like you would in person with the piece of paper and you would draw in front of them. So Zoom is also a very, a very valuable piece of software that's helping us through these, these times. So there you go. They're the four, four pieces of software, the four things which helped us respond uh, to these, I guess you'd say, unprecedented times of home learning. Um, so yeah, feel free to look those up. That's Teams, Seesaw, YouTube, obviously, uh, and then Zoom as well. I'll leave the links underneath this video as well. Um, but yeah, good luck with how you are structuring your, your home learning home learning education platform, let's say. If you do need any help or you've got any questions, then you know, feel free to reach out and I'll help as best as I can. But yeah, I'm Johnny, I'm from the PE Tutor, and yeah, I'll see you soon.